We've reached the end of this project and the last thing to do is to manufacture the PCB. That's step 7 of the PCB layout workflow. I'm going to show you two ways to do that. There's the easy way and there is also the traditional way. Now the easy way depends on plugins to KiCad. So plugins has been a feature since uh, KiCad 6. And lately there's been a few plugins that make the ordering process much easier to handle without actually leaving the KiCad environment. The traditional way of ordering a PCB is to export your PCB's Gerber files. It's a file format that most manufacturers can use and then uploading the zip file that contains these Gerber files to the manufacturer's website. As I said, I'll show you both methods and I'll start with the easy one. First, let's have a look at the plugin that I'll be using. If you go to the plugin and content manager, you can see that in my installed plugins, there is one from NextPCB called HQPCB or HQ NextPCB code and order. You can install that plugin by simply going to the default KiCad repository and searching for next PCB and you'll find the quote and order plugin and when you install it you'll see this button right here in the layout editors top navigation toolbar. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. So let's go ahead and open up the ordering plugin and that will bring up the active manufacturing window. So what this plugin has already done is that it's loaded the specifications of the PCB, in particular its dimensions and the number of copper layers and a few other bits of information that are required. And then it allows you to make your decisions about what your final PCB manufactured product should look like. So you can choose the material type, you can choose whether it's going to be a single piece or panelized, the thickness and so on. I'm just going to leave all that as defaults for just to keep this presentation uh, quick and simple, but you can experiment with all these changes yourself, with all these um, possibilities yourself. Now the important thing is that once you make your configuration for your manufactured PCB on the left side, you can go to the right side and click on update price button. This will send this information and your selections to the next PCB backend and it will then give you a price and a build time for the quantity of PCBs that you have selected. And let's say that I want to go with the 48 hour option, the regular option I'd say, uh, for $13.50. Uh, this is just for the manufacturing part of the pricing, not the shipping. I can then click on add to cart and that will bring up your order in the web browser where you can actually complete it. And now your order appears in the next PCB website in the ordering form with everything that you have selected, plus now uh, the uh, pricing for the shipping. So from here, you can continue with uh, your card and payment and so on. So that's the easy way of ordering a PCB these days. Now let's have a look at the traditional way. I'm going to put away, uh, close the plugin. I'm going to go back to PCB new and I'm going to go into file and then plot and bring up the plotter. Another way to get to this window is to click on the plot button in the top navigation bar and it will bring you to this. Here you need to select the plot format. I suggest you use Gerber because that is a compatible format that uh, pretty much all PCB manufacturers can understand. Select these layers, so front copper, back copper, paste, front and back, silk screen, front and back, the mask, front and back, and the edge cuts. And the only thing that I would add would be to use the Protel file name extensions as standard. The rest of the options here are as they are by default are correct. Next, you want to create a new output directory because this tool is going to generate a bunch of files. You want them to all be tidy inside a directory. So I'm going to call that Gerber's 4 LED 
torch. So these will go in here and just say yes. And then click on the plot button. Actually, before I do that, I'll show you what the project directory looks like right now. So here's the new directory I just created, which is empty. Just going to go in it and click on the plot button. And you can see that the Gerber files populated this directory. But there's another thing I need to do here, and that's the drill files. So anything that requires a drill, like for a through hole pad, you need to have then another drill file in the Gerber collection of files. So uh, again, click on generate drill files. It's going to use the same output directory, which is OK. The defaults are all good as they are. And then click on generate drill file. And that will add these two files down at the end. You can see DRL stands for drill. That's it. So now I can close. And I'm just going to go one step up in my directory. I need to generate the zip file or a, a zip archive for all those files because the next thing to do is to upload the zip file to the manufacturer. And again, to make things simple, I'm going to use next PCB for this. So I'm going to go to back to home. I'm going to start a new order. Let's go for PCB quote. See, it's got a Gerber file option to should be able to drag and drop. Yep. So they will upload the file. Do analysis. So there's my PCB. It's a good idea to take a few moments to inspect it. I remember one time where I uploaded a fairly elaborate PCB, but I forgot to upload the drills. <laughs> so I actually did the order the whole way and the PCB eventually came back to me perfectly manufactured, but with no holes for the through hole components. So yeah, it was a small disaster. Uh, so always take a few moments to look at your order before you place it. And then just continue with making your choices in the form here. It's going to be single. Uh, it's picked up the dimensions, so you don't have to worry about that. Just include the quantity. I'm going to leave the rest as they are. And you can see that the pricing and the shipping is all calculated automatically as you make changes to the order form. That's it. From this point onwards, both methods are the same. You can just click to add the order to your cart and continue with payment as required. The nice thing about the Gerber files method is that it is a method that is literally available for 99.99% .99 of uh, online PCB manufacturers. So it's always one that will work no matter what. One more thing that I want to mention here, and, but I'm not going to go into details, is that the Next PCB website offers you also the option to use their online viewer, which is a really nice tool for making a closer inspection of your PCB before you order it. And it's even got an analyzer. So here's the PCB that I just uploaded. Uh, you can have a look at the various layers by enabling them or disabling them uh, from the layer pane on the left side. But here on the right side, there is a DFM checklist, Design for Manufacturing Checklist, which tells you if there's any defects that it has detected on your board. And, and these checks are not the same as the ones that KiCad's checker tools do. They just go a step further because these are focusing on manufacturability of the PCB and not so much looking for things such as electrical faults or uh, overlapping silk screens, etc. Even though this tool can also do that, it can also get a full report in PDF format that looks like this that tells you about any issues that uh, potentially you should be looking at. I have uh, a lecture that is dedicated to the design for manufacturing report and the tool towards the end of the course. So if you are interested to learn more about how to use this tool, then uh, check out that lecture.